It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan Defaw. Before we get started, we want to help you save some money. That's right, folks. Uh, don't forget to use our promo codes to save that money. And let's start off with BuckDates.com. That's right, the brick-and-mortar store of BuckDates down at Sterling Heights, Michigan at 15 and Dodge Park. Go over there. If you're on the website, BuckDates.com, use the promo code UNJ20. That will get you 20% off your order. For those of you who are looking for Easy Cut products, make sure you go to EasyCutProducts.com. And when you're there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ15 off to save 15% off your your order. And let's not forget Lincoln Roan over at Packermax.com. It's never too early, never too late to think about the Packermax. Go on over to Packermax.com, use the promo code UNJ25. That'll give you $25 off your order over at Packermax Outdoor. For those of you looking for some new firearms and firearm products, make sure you go over to the islandarmory.com. While you're there shopping, use the promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order there. If you shot that bird of a lifetime and you want it mounted, go don't forget Troublesome Creek Taxidermy. We've had them live on the show. We've talked to them. Uh, you want to get 10% off your order, go to Facebook, go to troublesome.creek.7, find their website. If you go to our website, UNJ, make sure to click on the button to download the form. You get 10% off over there using the code UNJ10. Looking for that game call, whether it be a squirrel, whether it be goose, duck, deer, make sure you go to JPO Game Calls. Look for them at jpogamecalls.com. And while you're there shopping, use the UNJ10 promo code to save 10% off your order. And Miller Deer Tracking, the man that seems to never sleep during deer season, get 20% off your next deer tracking uh, using the promo code UNJ20. Look for Miller Deer Tracking on Facebook or give him a call over at 810-240-4891. Looking for the hottest new plastics to take on the water, whether it be hard water or soft water, make sure you go over to southernindianabaitco.com. While there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order. Deer Camp Coffee, folks. We drink it every night on the show. You want to try it? You can go to the brick and mortar store at 15 and Dodge Park at Deer Camp itself or go to DeerCampCoffee.com. Also use our promo code UNJ10. You get 10% off your order. And don't forget, get a bag of the UNJ Medium Roast Blend there as well. All right, Danny. Where's our live view camera look from tonight? That's right, folks. It is snowing here at the cabin, and we are taking a live look tonight up on Mackinac Island, looking down Main Street from the Chippewa Hotel, where it's a nice balmy 29 degrees. Uh, Just so you know, there's no motorized vehicles typically, but I just saw a snowmobile go down Main Street there, and there's one parked on the right-hand side there as well. Uh Uh-huh. Right? I don't want to go up there. There's nothing to hunt up there. Uh, There's a lot of things to hunt up there. Mm Mm-hmm. You just got to... well. Hunt, hunt some ice. Hunt some adult and, beverages. And, right? I want to uh, give a quick shout-out. looks like Matthew McConaughey is in the cabin tonight. All right, all right, all right. There you go. <laughs> Tammy got somebody, look at that. we got a couple walking down Main Street. Okay. See? All they're, right. They're well, enjoying it. You know what? They can have it. So, welcome to another episode of the Up Journal, everybody. Uh, sitting here in the cabin tonight with Dan DeFall. I'm Mike Adams, and uh, we're going to talk a little ice fishing tonight. Yeah, we're going to talk a little ice fishing tonight. Uh FYI, we got some big news coming up. Uh, won't be tonight, but we'll save that for a later show. A couple weeks? A couple weeks, probably. Okay. And uh, But other than that, there's been no ice. We've been like 10 degrees above normal temperatures. I've been sitting at work, and I've been watching uh, on our Skycam up in Bay City on Saginaw River. People are up there. They're getting their walleye. <laughs> they're doing it from a boat. Somebody posted a picture. I said, when you got to do ice fishing on soft water, and they had their ice fishing rods in their boat. Okay. Mm, Okay. But, you know, uh, last month, or actually it was earlier this month, we're almost out of this month. Man, where did January go, right? Right. Uh, But our own pro staffer, Adam Wynn, went up to the Bay de Noc and did some ice fishing. Uh, Bay de Noc or Little Bay de Noc? uh, Which bay were you on? Adam, help him out. (laughs) I was on Little Bay de Noc. There you go. Yep. (laughs) Welcome to the show, 
How's it going, guys? Ah, uh, I'm winding down after a somewhat semi-stressful day at work. Yeah, the I, snow doesn't help either. <laughs> no, no, not, especially on the way home, trying to get everybody out of my way. Right. You know, you got the people who, who like to drive way too fast, and you got the people who like to know how to drive on snow, and then you got people who are afraid every time you see a snowflake. Right. right? So, um, yep. I did see a couple people off in the giggly weeds on my way home, um, but you know what? It took it slow and steady, and... I sometimes let the semis lead the way. They kind of, yeah. they know the best way. Yep, stay out of their way. Right? <laughs> so, so, how you like the coffee tonight? I love the coffee. What are we drinking? We've got a little bit of uh, Deer Camp Coffee's uh, hazelnut. It's good stuff. It I'm is good lie. stuff. That is good. So, Mr. Fisherman on Ice, did you have a good time? Yeah, it's great. We awesome. had a blast. You had a blast. It was good, so that's always a plus. You were up the week, uh, Mike, or sorry, no, you were up the week. Mark and I went to ATA, um, yep. so we went kind of in different directions. How was the travel up there? Sometimes traveling to the UP from lower Michigan can be an absolutely interesting thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually pretty, we do it pretty uh, smart. Um, my buddy actually lives up in Onaway, so Tuesday night, we drove up from Howell up to Onaway, then spent the night, and then Wednesday morning around 7 a.m., we shot across the bridge and got into Escanaba around 10.30, 11 o'clock, so... Across the bridge, man! I got a pick here, yep. man. It looks uh, looks like you guys picked it just right. You're going across some blue skies. Yeah, yeah, it was good, good weather for sure, both uh, there and back. So okay, and and from what I can tell, it looks like there's open water there. You guys didn't have water or frozen water until you got way up where you were going, right? Yep, we didn't see any ice. I mean, there's a little bit of shore ice, you know, along Lake Michigan there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the most ice was definitely in Gladstone, Escanaba. So okay. All right. Yep. So, how long were you guys up there? Uh, we're there from Wednesday to Sunday. So Wednesday, to Sunday, three Sunday. three full days of you know fishing. So okay. So how many guys? How many of you all went? Four of us. Okay. So. Is this pretty much like yep. an annual thing for you guys? Yep. We started doing it a couple of years ago, so it's going to be a, a yearly thing for sure. Okay. Um, we've got nice little cabins there on the water, so it makes it nice and convenient. So something you guys just rent, or one of your buddies got? Yep, we just rent them from them. So. If you don't mind me asking, what, what does something like that cost per night for a cabin? That place is an absolute steal. Um, it was 50 bucks a person a night. Oh, so it wow. cost me two hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks total for everybody. For four. So it's an ab- it's it's an absolute steal. So yeah, I want to ask exactly where it's at. What's the name? What's the name of the place? It's called Lindbergh's Cove. Lindbergh Cove is that right on US two? Yep. Um, I think so. Yep. It's after you come down towards Gladstone and the Kipling there. I wasn't okay. going to give away his secret, so. but now you did, so you got him to admit where he was at. <laughs> if any, <laughs> hey, if they, we drive them more business, I'm sure they're they're happy. Yeah. So. No, those cabins were full. Yep, we had neighbors on both sides of us. So everybody up there fishing, I assume. Yep, the guys next to us uh, were from Wisconsin. The other people were from downstate. So okay, nice. Yep, people coming over from Wisconsin taking our fish. Yeah. What's up with yeah, that? You honestly see a lot more Wisconsin people up there than you know lower Michigan people. So you have no idea. You should see <laughs> the. You should see it in May when it's the opener on the inland lakes. It is yeah. literally. If, if there was a, a ratio, it, it, it's usually three to one that it's Wisconsin right. plates as opposed to Michigan plate. So yeah, they just you know they we treat it like our area here treats like Houghton and. Uh, up there, so it makes sense. Mm-hmm. An hour right. drive, they got some great fish. So, but yeah, I mean, make, they got Green Bay though. I mean, that's a pretty good body of water there. Too. It's a big body of water though. Some of those people don't. You yep. know, some people tend not to go on on bigger bodies of water. And yep. You can, yeah, you know, this guy right <laughs> here, and you can uh, basically, you know, lake hop if you know one lake to another. It's real easy, and some hi- yeah. lakes are hidden. So, but you're on the the bay up there, and uh, you know, you guys got up there and you got all set. Did you did you go out right away, or did you like have to you know? What time did you get up there? Uh, we got into Escanaba around 10, 30, or 11. Went into the mire there, got a bunch of food for the weekend. Uh, went back to the house, kind of chilled out from the drive, and then we went on the ice around 2 o'clock and fished till about 6, 37. So. That's not a bad way to start the day. No. Nope. Get your food, get settled in, get out there, spend an evening on the ice. Right. So, and, uh, so your main target was going to be walleye because that's what the bay is famous for, right? Yep, walleye and big pike, yep. Definitely going for the walleye, but a nice big pike will be a bonus too. So, so you're on the big water. Uh, I mean, we've talked hedge on the show, and we've talked about it before, but you know, talk a little bit about how your your gear getting out there, how you guys set up, and all that. Uh, you know, I'll run through a couple pictures here you sent us. So we got the sleds in the trailer here. 
Yeah, we had three sleds and three shanties. So two two people were on that two up uh, sled, and then me and my other buddy just had our own sleds. Okay. Um, but yeah, we all had our own shanties, nice big shanties. You know, insulated too. Like like I said before, insulation on the shanties is really good, uh, especially when it gets windy out. As soon as that wind starts hitting a non insulated canvas, you can feel it coming through. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, everything essential. You know, extra batteries for everything. So. Uh, just you know preparation for big water is a lot more extensive than you know your smaller inland lakes so yeah did you did now do your uh snowmobiles have uh studs in the tire just purposely for the ice yep they do have studded tracks yep right you don't, don't want to go zinging around right a lot of people just like studded tracks just riding trails in general too you know you get a lot more right. traction for stuff. sure that's but, one of the things if you're a big trail rider you know you, yep. you need that added traction on the studs and you know you get into it and before you know it it really works out well we got a picture of, of uh up right now of, of the gear ready to go Yep, that was right outside the cabin, and right off to the left, uh, is, you know, fifty yards is the water. So yeah, it looks like it. I can see a dock out there that's lit. Yep, up. that's their that's their uh, open water dock right there. Yep. Okay, so they're right on the water. You just take off from yep. the yard, and away you go. Exactly. Yep. You know that's kind of cool. They got a light there too. When it gets a little darker, you know. You know, they get a lighted something on the shore when you get close, right? Kind of finds oh, your yeah. home. It gets, it gets dark out there. So. <laughs> yeah, it does get G- dark, right? GPS, GPS, uh, as always. The first day we got up there, Wednesday, you know, we only had half day. It was completely foggy. Um, I mean, you couldn't see 200 yards. So coming back in at night, if you didn't have a GPS, you know, you'd be in trouble. Was it, was it windy every day? Uh, Friday and Saturday were pretty windy. Okay, so that was my, probably uh, when that was probably when the weather started to change. Yeah, Friday I had to put my wind poles up in my shanty, so it was getting pretty windy out there. Speaking Nothing of, like we had last year. Last year we had forty to fifty mile an hour uh, winds out there. We fished all day through that. So, so we're looking now at the inside of your shanty. Uh, okay, you kind of at your setup. You, you took the picture. It looks like from up top. You can see the ice holes there. Uh, kind of run through what uh, what you got going on here. I mean, we can see the quilted inside, and you, and you mentioned that, that that's key to staying warm out there on, on open water. Yeah, so that, that'll let you not run your heater all day. I mean, I was turning off my heater because I was starting to sweat. So basically, I got my, my heater on the left there, on that bucket there. That's my fish finder. Okay. Uh, sometimes I'll drill three holes, depending on, you know, how I'm fishing, you know, if I'm moving a lot or whatnot. So the middle hole, I'd put my uh, fish finder deucer down. Mm-hmm. But here, I'm just running on my right side there. Um, and then the left hole is for my dead stick rod, which you can kind of see on, on the top sitting on that red bin. Gotcha. That's a, that's, a, that's a rod I just sit there, you know, don't touch it at all. I put a live minnow on that, just let it sit. So gotcha. you catch a lot of fish off a dead stick like that. So. Okay, gotcha. So what, what do you got there in the middle there? Is that like a little tray to hold your drinks and your lures and yep. all that kind of good hold stuff? My, yep, hold my coffee, my cell phones, extra lures. Is that, is, is that, a, is that a two-man ice chain? Yep, that okay. is a two-man, yep. Yep. And then and they uh, make a bigger one of that, but I got like uh like I said before, I I fish a lot by myself. So I got like the two man smaller version, but they make a, a bigger one of that as well. So Okay. And now your room though. We're looking at the reverse angle of that now, kind of the way your seats are set up there and everything. Uh I noticed you got a light in up on the, the top of that bar. That's gotta be good, uh pretty awesome for, for fishing at night when you need a light yep. in there. Yeah, especially setting up in the mornings too. It's nice. So speaking of night, I, I, I got to throw this shot in here. I, this shot to me blew it's me a away. very good shot. Uh, the the moon and your shanty and the sled sitting there on the ice and reflection coming off the ice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was actually the that was actually in the morning. That was, oh, that was uh, a morning shot. That okay. was the first. Yeah, that was actually in the morning. That was the first morning. So it was pretty cool to. So you know, encounter that first day. So. The light we see coming up on the horizon, uh, back at the horizon, then that's not town. That's uh, that's actually probably the sun come, starting to come up. Yep, exactly. Yep. What time did um, you get? What time did you get out there? Uh, about six a.m. So we're leaving the house around five thirty, getting out on the ice, being set up by you know six six thirty. That you know, and it was funny because you know we had Wednesday, which is midweek, so you don't have a lot of people out there. By Thursday and Friday, it picked up pretty good. So it's nice to get out there early, get on the spot where you want to sit. And, you know, if you get out there too late, the spots are going to be picked over. So. Yeah, it, it really surprised me at how few people in the photos, like we're, I'm kind of going through the, the outside foot shots now during the day, and there's really not a lot of people there, it didn't look like. Nope, I think in one of those videos, there's a pretty substantial amount. 
and that was probably Saturday. Okay. Saturday so was you, pretty, you pretty see, busy out there. You see an uptick getting into the weekend, right? You got up there on a Wednesday. You probably yep. didn't see anybody Wednesday, Thursday, but Friday, Saturday, you saw the uptick. Yep, Wednesday was pretty pretty nice out there. There was there was not a lot of people out there. Thursday it kind of ramped up, and then Friday and Saturday were pretty pretty heavy for sure. All right. Well, I tell you what, uh, we've talked about you getting up there and where you stayed. How about we take a break and we we'll come back? We're gonna talk about what he used to catch his, fish. His, his fish. All right. We're gonna step outside, take our first break. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at pseartery.com. Welcome back, second segment of the show. So we got up north, we got on the ice, he's got food at the cottage, sleds on the ice. I want to get a spot. He's got his spot, he's got the hole cut, so now. So it, so to start off, when you're out there, uh, how many rods tip up, how many lines can you have in the water, in the ice? You can have three lines in the water, and that's both open water and hard water. Okay, so... so uh, you know, you get out there, you, you obviously we saw the two rods inside your shanty, but in the one, go back to that picture that I left. Um, that'll be perfect, actually. So how many tip, you had a tip up also out there, right? Yep, I had one tip up out, yep, so that would have been my third line. Yep. So yes, Mark Coleman, that is a tip up you see in the picture. The Indiana, Southern Indiana boy knows what a tip up is. Right, and <laughs> uh, so did everybody do that? Everybody in your party put out a tip up and some poles inside? Uh, me and my buddy were fishing the same, so we were, uh, had a jigging rod, a dead stick, and one tip-up, and then the other two guys that I went up with, they had two tip-ups out and just jigging one rod. Okay, so so overall, just a scorecard of what did better for the four days you were there? Was it the tip-ups, or was it the dead rods, or was it the jigging rods? Uh, to be completely honest, we didn't catch one fish on a tip-up. Okay. Well, that was surprises me. Does that surprise very, you? Very, very surprising, yep. Very surprising. We were shocked. Uh, I mean, we had tip ups set, you know, in different depths, different baits on them. So it was pretty, pretty crazy. So what were you trying on them? Suckers, and then we had shiners as well. Okay, and you didn't so, catch I mean, they're, one they're, thing. They're, they're, we didn't catch one, and they were pretty good size. I mean, they were four or five inch suckers, and I, and I was marking fish all day, and nothing was hitting my tip. Although it was that is ag- that is sh- that is shocking because it's crazy. You know, at least you would think you'd have one go off, especially if you're marking fish. Yeah, we kind of had a tough bite. Um, we did we did decent. We caught a lot of fish, but it was definitely a tougher bite. Uh, the amount of fish we marked versus how many we caught was not as good as we'd hoped, but we did it. We did pretty good. So I think another day or two, the bite would have turned on because if they were if they were empty stomachs, then they probably would have got hungry eventually. Yep, I would have said Sunday or Monday probably would have turned on pretty good for them. The fish we flayed on Saturday, all the fish we flayed had nothing in their stomach. Hmm. So not a single thing. That's interesting because you said the weather came in on Friday and Saturday, which they, they didn't eat. Yep. And then, uh, you know, so you got out your, your, your fishing rod. Uh, what rods were you using? Um, and what do you recommend for somebody that's thinking about getting a nice fishing rod? What, do you, what should you recommend them getting? Um, I use Mag's custom rods. Uh, they're made in Jawin, Michigan, so I like to, you know, sport local. Uh, I run a 32 inch uh, medium, and then he's got a 32 inch mags medium, which is just a little bit heavier backbone on it. All right, hold that up so, for, the, for the camera there and show everybody yep. you, you got there. So yeah, that's it one right there. And that's in black. Yep, that's in black. You can get them all customized, whatever you want. So we we did see mags at the fishing show uh, when I was there, and he had a plethora of colors that you could get. And I think we even talked about you could see them. Um, Glow in the dark ones now. So yep. Um, so Travis Sweeten Mag's custom rods. That's the way to go, right? So yep. Um, but they're well built rods. We we've had him on the show. We hope to get him back on the show again. Um, so you, what kind of line you got on that? Uh, so I run a braid to a fluorocarbon leader. So I run like a eight or ten pound uh, braid, and then I run like a six or eight pound fluoro leader to it, six or eight feet, whatever you're comfortable with. 
and that's what I use for my walleye fishing rods. So cool. You know, you're thinking. Yeah, I was thinking. It just I was trying to put it all. To, I was visualizing the the two connecting to get his leader. Uh, and it's called a uni to uni knot. There you go. Well, you got your Works laptop very, up there. Very, very well. See if you can find one of those nuts. I very, will. very strong knot. Yep. I'm going to put them to work here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What uh, What were you tipping them with? Uh, I was using a lot of spoons and, like, rattle baits. Mm -hmm. So um, any type of spoon uh, was working pretty good. Uh, any, like, rattle bait, it's got, like, something like this. So this actually has, like, little BBs inside. So when you're not marking fish, if you jig this really hard, it almost calls fish in. You know, okay. it attracts fish. They hear that noise in the water column. They come over and check it out. So I caught a lot of fish on a rattle bait. But spoons were also working very well. So just like a typical typical spoon like that. Okay. Nothing crazy. Tip it with a minnow head mm -hmm. just at the bottom of the treble hook there. Same with this rattle bait. You can tip the, the bottom treble hook here with a minnow head as well. So okay. I was catching them with no bait on the rattle baits. Like I said, if you jerk it super aggressive and a fish comes in pretty aggressive it'll just come up and smack it you know okay. it's a pretty aggressive jigging bait so did you try those lures out that you got from escanaba uh i did a couple times i caught a couple smaller walleye on them but um we kind of honed in on what baits were working really well and what was bringing fish in so i kind of used the rattle baits and the spoons a lot up there so you so you're all using kind of the same type of gear uh you, you got on a color and, and uh whether it be a rattle bait or a, a spoon you, you got on something you all your you and your buddies did well with that well, at first, you know, we all want to use something different. So mm -hmm. we all had something different on, right? Mm -hmm. First day we were up there, uh, I caught two fish, and then I, you know, I sent them a picture. And I was like, hey, put this on. And sure enough, you know, they started catching fish on them. So. Okay. When you it could be as simple as a, you know, it could be as simple as a bait, or it could be as simple as a color as well. So When, when you're talking, you know, starting to catch them, how deep of water were you starting to catch fish in? Uh, we were fishing 20, 20 plus, so anywhere from 22 feet all the way up to 29, 28 feet. Okay. So. They're all holding it down de a lot deeper than, uh, what, what was the water depth there overall? Uh, I think it gets down to like 50 or 60 up in the upper bay there. It's, when you go farther down towards Lake Michigan, it gets mm -hmm. deeper, obviously. But in the upper bay there, it's about 50 or 60 feet in the part. All right. If you want to see how to tie a uni, the uni knot, I have the picture. Yeah, you get the picture? Okay. I do. You did your homework. Okay. I did my homework. And it's, it's actually kind of a pretty simple knot. There you go. It's Very actually, simple, yep. It's actually two knots, and then you pull them together, and uh, you pull on the opposite ends. <coughs> oh, coffee's a little strong. Getting choked up, are you? I'm getting choked up over the uni, the uni knot. Okay. And, and the end of the knots, draw close together, and you trim them off, and there you go. Strong as can be. Never broke off. It's pretty slick. Never broke off at the knot. Yet. There you go. That's what, you know, that's what you want to say. There you go. Yeah, yeah. not yet. <laughs> not get it? Not yet. <laughs> oh, boy. But That's uh, something you would say. It is. That is actually something I would and say. And he groans at it. Okay. It's, it's not wasn't mine. Yeah. That's okay. why. But, you know, you're out there. You're in, you're in that depth of water. Obviously, um, you, you got your fishing equipment. You got your uh, minnows. Um, the You were wearing a floating suit, correct? Yes, I was. Yep. And... and, and Obviously, that adds to your warmth in your shed, so that's got to work out really good, right? Yeah, once I get everything set up, like my shanty flipped over and everything, I'll take my jacket off, and I'll just wear a hoodie and my pants in there. Uh, I always have ice spikes out there, so that's always a must for me, Re regardless if it's oh, yeah. 10 inches or 12 inches, it don't matter. Okay, so we got the video of you reeling the fish in here. You, you got bibs on here. Uh, is that yep. part of the floating suit? That is the float suit, correct, yep. Got Those you. always stay on, you. Yep. Okay. So the light you got running on the, oh, yeah. the ceiling there on the bar. Okay. How, yep. long is it, how long will that thing run? I ran it all day. I got a 12 amp uh, lithium ion battery, okay. so I could run. It's got like a 20 some hour run time on it, so I could run. I could run that for two days if I wanted to. You know. Yeah. So that's another thing. Like you know, a couple of those days if we weren't marking fish or didn't you know if we weren't on active fish, you know, a lot of us were splitting off, going going you know maybe a mile from each other. You know, just trying to find a good school of active fish that are feeding. Um, but yeah, we were we were pretty close most of the time, but that's because we were on fish. So you guys kind of did your own little networking. You guys will split up, try to find yep. the fish, and when you found them, you called everybody exactly. in, right? Kind of like yep, what Scott, exactly. kind of like what Scott was doing when we were up with him mm -hmm. out on the bay, right? He, when we were looking for fish, 
he was calling all his friends, checking out, seeing what everybody's doing, yeah. sharing your information. Yep. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're all up there to have a good time and catch fish. So definitely mm-hmm. communications going on for sure. And that's you know that's a good system to have. I, I'm I'm kind of impressed by what Scott does there up on the bay, and, and you guys kind of do the same thing with your own yep. little group. Split up, find the fish, and then let's go find them. Right. All right. So, uh, Mark Coleman asks, are <laughs> girls allowed to fish with you all? Yeah. My buddy and his girlfriend, we went up there last year and fished. Nice. It was a good time. Yep. Good time. So, so the, yes, they are allowed. <laughs> so, the tip-ups didn't do anything. Nothing. Not a single fish. How about the, the, the dead head rods? Uh, dead stick I dead. caught, I don't know, probably a half dozen on a dead stick. Uh, maybe one or two keepers on it. Uh, I was catching a lot of short fish. Um, caught a lot of nice keepers too. Um, but the jigging rod was definitely producing overall. So, sure. so the, the the technique of the week was jigging. Yep, jigging um, aggressive. Yep. And then as soon as they come in, just kind of slow your jig down. And then once they come up, just kind of almost stop your bait, almost jiggle a little bit under the water, and then they'll they'll snap on it. So. Right. And and, and and Tammy is excited to know if the pink of any type of pink was catching fish. Um, pink. Um, I don't think I used anything pink. Actually, you know what I did? It was the Beaver's uh Shiver Minnow that I was using. Oh, pink. that was, was that a was a brand new one for you. It was a pinky one. Yep. Actually, yeah. Yep. And did it did it did it work? Yeah, I caught a couple shorts on it. Nothing, no keepers on it. Um, like I said, once we kind of honed in on a bait, that's what we were kind of used. So nice. And then uh, obviously, did you wait? To every at the end of every day to clean your fish or did you you know to do that or and then cook them up or did you save them up or how did you how did you plan uh filet um, bad boys a couple of days we filleted them up that night and then uh friday and saturday we kind of combined fish and then we had a fish fry so it was good all fish eaten good. up there or do you bring some home uh, I brought home some walleye. Uh, ate all that up within a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> Didn't last long in the fridge, did it? No, that was gone. I, I, I tell you what, that um, the the walleye we got when we were with Scott. I mean, it, yeah, first fish fry out of the gate, and it's like gone. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff for sure. Did any of you limit out any of the days? Uh, unfortunately, none of us did limit. Um, the most I had on the ice was two one day. All right, and that was and that was crazy. I mean, I had two in the morning. That's a, I, that picture. I had two on the you know in the morning before ten o'clock, and I didn't catch another keeper the rest of the day. So just how it goes, mm-hmm. you never know. You know, if you're not out there, you're not trying. So you know, yep. right? So I tell you what, let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll continue on our up north ice fishing journey. With Adam Win. All right, we'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. All right, third segment of the show. Welcome back. Uh, so we talked about all the setup and everything, catching fish and what they were using. And for those out there that are listening on the podcast, just a, a word of interest. If, if you don't think you're missing anything by just listening to the podcast, you are. You should go to the Facebook Live or catch the show when I post it over on YouTube because there's things that are said in the breaks you never hear on the podcast itself. That's right. Right? That's so, right. uh I tell you what, let's see. That's right, that was especially for you, Mark. <laughs> um, okay, so you drove up there, and somebody said that's a nice truck and trailer rig. Is it? Yeah, that's my buddy. He's got a nice setup for sure. He's a big snowmobiler, so that's a big snowmobile trailer. So we, we jammed all the gear in that trailer, so it's nice and convenient. It's all heated, so it's nice to be able to stick your stuff in there, keep it all nice and warm and dry. So One thing is nice is you got a covered trailer, so when you're driving up, you don't have the contents of the highway in your trailer on your stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. Yep. Okay, so uh, when you're up there and at night, you come in off the ice when you're done fishing for the evening. You, you talk about having everything kind of warm and dry. Do you park the uh, the sleds back in the trailer? So while we were up there, no. We just left them in front of the house there, Okay. Uh, right outside. But... Um, like like Danny said, you know, coming up or going back down, it's nice to keep all this, you know, the road slush and rain off your off your gear. So gotcha. All right. A good question from Mark: uh, When you're out there ice fishing, uh, does your shanty have to be marked, labeled with your name and address? 
Uh, it does not unless it's a permanent check. So if you're keeping it overnight, it has to have your name on it. So if you were to leave your shanty out there overnight, it should have the, your name and address on it. Correct. I believe if it's unattended, it definitely has to. But if, if it's attended, so if you're sleeping overnight, I don't think it has to have your name on it. Obviously, you're you're there with the shanty. But it's for them to, you know, check to make sure everything's, you know, good, if, you know, whatever it is. So. But I think, if it's a permanent check, it definitely has to have your name and address on it. So. I think with his setup, if he left it overnight, it'd be gone the next morning. Well, that, well, that's obviously that's that's the thing, right? If you yeah. take one of those nice, nice sheds like that with with everything included, yeah. you know, you, but yeah. They, you I think Mark's thinking more like along the lines of grumpy old men. You know, it's like a, a small house. <laughs> you know, well, those the, they have those up there, and you see yeah. them parked in people's front yards waiting yeah. for the winter, and you can only imagine what happens. You yeah, know, they'll spend days out there probably. It'd be a small camper, you know, a little two wheel, a single axle camper with holes drilled in the floor where they can fish right through the floor. Hey, that's not a bad gig. Yeah. Not, no, no, not at all. That's kind of like that sleeper shanty we did up there at Houghton. How? From the floor to the ice. Do you remember? Was there like a foot, six? Mm, yeah, no, uh, six, six inches, maybe a foot. Mo- okay. I don't think it was a foot. I remember being in there. I just don't remember. I just know the ice was super thick. Yes, it was super yeah. thick, and it was on uh, the skis yeah. so they could pull it off, right? Yeah. Uh, did you encounter any DNR while you were out there? Oh, yeah, he was out there, but he did, never came and checked me. Actually, he checked my buddy that was 50 yards from me and never came over to me. So I wasn't doing anything wrong, so I have nothing to worry about. But they are definitely out there checking, making sure you're keeping legal fish. So obey by the laws or they will get you. So for sure. With the DNR being out there, you said you had a, uh, a quad go through the ice. Did that draw a lot of attention, I assume? And did they get it out? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of local guys up there. I mean, pretty. I mean, any body of water you fish, you know, sportsmen are pretty friendly. So everybody teams up, gets that stuff out of there. So the local bait bait shop up there, Blades Bait and Tackle, they came out there with a big side by side side by side and helped them, you know, get it out of the ice. So was it definitely just, a friendly uh, environment there? Was it just too heavy, or would he hit a soft spot? Uh, he was coming right off uh, the corner of a point, so, I mean, he was in a bad spot, just a known spot. Like I said before, do your research where you're going, because mm-hmm. if you don't, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So we stayed far clear of that spot. We knew about it. So yeah. Do your research. Don't get yourself in trouble. That's one reason on the big water. Speaking of big water, you sent a picture, uh, or maybe it was the week before you posted a picture, a uh, freighter going through up there. Yeah, that was actually just south of Escanaba. Okay, it was There was people fishing right by it. I mean, not smart. No, I mean, even, you know, if you're on a foot of ice or whatever, however thick it was, I mean, a freighter pushing, even if There's he's not just, that much ice up there, that's the yeah, thing, yeah. It, it's it's going to move ice, you know, and it, it's got to... It's got to lift it as well, you know, yep. not just shove it. Lift in a in a regular boat, when a freighter goes by, mm-hmm. you're like rocking and rolling. Yeah. I can only imagine that wave taking the ice with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that ain't happening. No. Yeah, those people are lucky, definitely. Right, right. Not Wind smart. up on a flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, head to Chicago. Yeah. Um, did you catch any tagged fish? I did not. I was hoping I was, but I didn't catch a tag. Is is there is there known to be a lot of tagged fish up in that area? Like, um, like, Sa- mean, like Saginaw Bay? You never know, I guess. I mean, they're coming all the way up from Green Bay. So, I mean, you could be getting fish tagged in Wisconsin from Wisconsin DNR coming up in the Little Bay to knock. You know, you never so. But, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that catch tagged fish up there, same as Saginaw Bay. Mm-hmm. A lot of tagged fish come out of there. So, now, that'd be Wisconsin tagging them. I mean, I, I don't, there's nothing uh, like the... Uh, what am I trying to think of here? The the bounty on them where you can... Yeah, it would be out of Wisconsin. There, there's nothing like on the federal level where the feds are tagging fish. Are, or is there? Not that I know of. No, I don't... No. I don't it's I just don't. just your local, you know, game warden. Okay. Right? So. And uh, you wonder, you know, it would be interesting to have their take on the walleye over in Green Bay. Like, like kind of like what we talk about Saginaw Bay here. Yeah. You got Green Bay over there. But, um, you know, I, I'm sure catching a tag fish would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah definitely. would have been a cool, cool you know, one. It's on, the, it's on the bucket list. One day I'll get one. So who caught the biggest fish? Uh, my buddy Jesse caught the biggest one. That was 22 inches, so not bad. Pretty nice swallow. Jigging, jigging, uh, jigging the spoon I told him to put on. So, like I said, communications up there is good. If you're catching fish, let your buddies know. Did, Everyone wants to have a good time. So, um, I totally lost my train of... Oh, so there was a picture we have of a fish taking a bait. He hit it really good. Um, yep. do you think that was because they had the empty stomachs and they were starting to turn on to feeding, or... Yeah, I mean that that got me pretty excited. You know, when that when that you know fish bites like that or feeds on something like that, it's a good sign. Um, but it actually ended up not being a sign. We actually didn't catch many fish. 
also went dry after that, eh? It did, yep. So when you get bored waiting on a bite, what do you do out there? Scroll on your phone, <laughs> play some music, look out the window. There's a lot of uh, commodity <laughs> going on around outside, so. Watch a quad go through the ice? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 okay, so he says, so he says looking out those little windows we saw in the picture, it's that look of, I wish a fish would bite, no? Yeah. A little sad face. Yeah. Right, a little yeah. sad face. But, well, you know what? When there's a lot of people out there, like there was probably on Saturday, it does get kind of comical. You can hear people zipping by or laughing or whatever they're doing because yep. noise travels out there. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it could be fun, though, especially if you got a group like you yeah. guys did, right? Yeah, it was did, a good time for sure. So. Did you guys do anything at night, go at night, night, uh, night fishing or have a bonfire or anything like that? No, we just kind of relaxed, cooked uh, dinner every night. So just kind of after a long 13-hour day of fishing, you're kind of whooped from it. So, all right, you got the fish off the ice. You guys got off the ice safely. So who was the cook? Uh, my buddy Travis and my buddy Jesse. And how did They're they cook them? Cooking. Uh, deep fried. Oh, you went the deep fried. Nice, a little short lunch, put them in the deep fryer. It was pretty good, yeah. Can't Definitely go wrong really good. All right, so you said you guys went up and you picked up food, so obviously you had some extra food there in case you didn't catch fish. What, what, yep. uh, what's your go-to meal up there at fish camp? So my buddy Travis made uh, some chili for the first night, really good chili, super, super spicy. Mm-hmm. So, Light uh, your shorts on fire spicy? Yep. Um, you don't want to be second. too far from the cabin. <laughs> I, that's exactly <laughs> where my thought when I'm like, you're having spicy chili yeah. right before you go out of the And ice. you're a mile, mile and a half offshore. I may or may not had to come in the next day. Yeah, at about a hundred oh, yeah, 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 miles an hour on that sled. <laughs> no, it wasn't too bad. But like I said, it's nice out there. You only got to go back a mile or two. Yeah. Saginaw Bay, you get a, you just got to go on the ice. You're eight nine miles out there. So <laughs> with with the uh, little bay to knock there, you got a little more you know amenities, I, I guess. I, just, I can't imagine you know pulling up, getting off a sled, and looking over and going. What is that? What? That's yeah. a nice log. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that right? Yeah. Oh my! That could not. That it, no, I mean, no. You, you see a yellow spot on on the, the ice. You, you know, you know what that is. But right? Wow. You know, it, obviously, <laughs> it, it, maybe a, an extra sled or two. Maybe I'll take a porta potty with you with a yeah. tent on that. Right? That. But that's we've sunk to an all new low. No, that's what he. <laughs> he's done on the ice. That's what happens when Tammy you're said that's why he's fishing alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but you know what? Uh, you got to do what you got to do. So you had chili, you cooked the fish. You know, it sounds like it's a great four days in the UP. Yeah. And then something happened to the ice on Sunday, right? Yeah, actually, that actually happened Saturday when we were out there. Um, the ice was very noisy on Saturday. There was, like I said, it was pretty windy out there. So the ice actually shoved up on each other. So it was made a big ice shove. Um, and that's the noise we were hearing. Sunday when we were coming back, uh, the local bait shop ended up posting a picture of it. And that crack actually ended up opening up over 10 feet wide uh, a couple days later after what, we were out there. What was the name of the bait store? Uh, the bait store is called Blades Bait and Tackle, and they do daily reports up there. So if you're ever looking to go fish, you know, Little Bay to Knock, definitely look at their page. They have everyday updates on the ice conditions, the bite. So definitely friendly people over there. If you stop in there, you know, they'll they'll tell you, you know, good safe paths to travel, you know, what the fish are biting on, mm-hmm. where they're catching. So definitely friendly over there. Good source of information. Absolutely, yep. And they do local guides as well. So okay. I think one of those videos I showed you, there's a big side-by-side pulling a big shanty out with another one behind it. Mm-hmm. That's the local guide. So, I mean, they bring 5, 10, 15 people out there and, you know, set them up. guides out there. Yep, set them well, up overnight. They so. got a current picture as of January 25th. That's today. Um, that's well, a, that's pull a, that up full. I'll throw it up. Uh, I'll try to Got to teach Danny how to run Peter. No, it's not going to. Oh, hold it right there. There you go. Um, we're at their website now. Anyone want to go check it out. But they got a picture up uh, adding ice a little at a time. They've got their quad out there, which has got tracks on it, which is pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, it's we're we're going, <laughs> we're leaving January, but we still got another month. You still make some ice. Make some, make some ice. And we're, the weather's going to change here. Especially up north. Right? So. Yeah, they usually fish into to March up there. I mean, they'll, they'll close the walleye season up there on the ice usually. So, okay. But you never know. It's Michigan. <laughs> right. Yeah, can give it five minutes, it'll change. So, yeah. I tell you what, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll finish up talking about your trip up north. All right, we're going to step outside, take our last break. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. 
PSC pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at PSCArchery.com. All right, welcome back. Last segment of the show. Um, we just got a question popped in from Ms. Delka. And cheeks or no cheeks? Oh, uh, we didn't keep any cheeks. She's Most of the fish we were catching were smaller fish. I mean, they're, they were legal size, but they're more All 15 right. to 17, 18 inches. So okay. there wasn't big big cheeks on them, I okay. guess. All right. If they were more quality fish, definitely would keep the cheeks. So. Yeah. She does love the cheeks. Yeah. All right, what you got there, Dan? So, looking at the website, if you're feeling like going up there and spending a night on the ice, they do have sleeper shanties. And uh, Mike did this on Houghton Lake, mm -hmm. and they had a blast. And uh, you go up there, it's 8 by 21 all-season sports trailer. You see it here. Uh, bunks, ice fishing holes, the heater, uh, the whole nine yards. Uh, four anglers. You get, you get fresh live bait. Transportation from the bait store on and off the ice. You know, it, it's awesome, you know. And... You got a price on it? Forced air heat. No cons, no cons. Uh, $500 rate 500, overnight. Right? Not per person. So you pay, you all, per group, yep. you all chip in, get a shanty for the night or a couple nights, however you want to do it. How many does it sleep? Four. Four? Okay. Check it as a noon. All right. That's pretty cool. Pretty so, cool. That's a lot nicer than the ones we stayed in. That's for yeah, sure. They got a they got a pretty nice setup over there for sure. Yeah. Yours was a, a a shack. It was literally a, it was a shipping crate. Uh, it's <laughs> it's what they they ship cars from overseas to the states in. So if you can imagine, you know, long enough to put a vehicle in, wide enough to put a vehicle in, and you know, probably eight foot high, six to eight foot Is high. That's what that was really. That's what they said they were. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and they cut a door in the side and put a door on it and cut holes in the bottom to. You know, to fish through. So yeah, there you go. That is pretty cool. And uh, no, it's not insulated. Matter of fact, my uh, you know, you get a little heat in there, a little condensation. You know, from the the little propane burner going. And if you don't get fresh air in there and get that moisture out, your sleeping bag will freeze to the wall. All right, that, that sounds yeah. like fun. Yeah, I don't ask me how I know that, but I do know <laughs> that <laughs> you freeze right. to the wall. It was cold, man. Yeah, we were sitting on 22 inches of ice. It was it was cold. Yeah. vehicles out there on that the was ice. cold i remember coming yeah. up the next day and it was it was it wasn't too bad the day we were up there no it wasn't too bad during the day but there was what 20 inches of ice and and we had set. a good time yeah it was, it was you, wild you fish houghton lake a lot i've never fished houghton lake in my life it, it's an interesting not once nope. it's, it's an interesting setup because you can see the the channel everybody kind of fishes off of. pike alley pike alley and uh yep. you just kind of go there and get find a spot if you can we actually kind of they have the sleeper shanty so we kind of got in the area and then we just put up the tip-ups we just kind of gotcha. tipped up all day and talked so we could walk over to their shanty and go back but um yeah it was kind of a, it was fun um so overall for this year how do you think you're doing for ice fishing you know good season bad season but when you're out on the ice how do you, how are you feeling that you're catching fish not catching fish um, yeah, I mean, so far it started off the season good with that trip. You know, definitely caught some good fish up there. My biggest one was 20 inches. Um, so definitely started off the season good. Ice in the lower half of Michigan is pretty limited right now. So usually I'd be fishing right now, you know, on the ice. But hopefully by next weekend I'll be back out on the ice getting to it again. So Well, you know, uh, you got out, you were able to get out just a little bit before it was Christmas, right? Yep, right after Christmas, yep. Yeah, so you, you caught a couple of fish then, yep. and all the ice went away in lower Michigan. Yep. And then you made that trip, and then you're heading back. Uh, hopefully next week, It's supposed to get, uh, we're supposed to have winter return finally here in Michigan. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. But, but yeah, so overall, you think you're doing pretty good then for time on the ice. Yeah, for what the ice we have, for sure, definitely. Uh, I got another trip planned going up north again, so hopefully get on some more walleye again. So, so what were you having? Uh, we got some questions coming in now. Uh, so, when you were out there, what snack were you having while waiting for those fish to bite? Oh, I had a whole bunch of stuff. Um, actually, my buddy Jesse made up, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 breakfast burritos. So, I had a couple of those every day, you know, heated them up right on my heater. Um, I don't know, I got a bunch of chips, candy out there, anything just to munch on. Nothing in particular, but... Just chowing down. Did you throw any Skittles in the in the water to try to get the oh, fish? Yeah. <laughs> I, threw, 
I bought some Swedish fish and I threw one <laughs> Swedish fish in the water. <laughs> See? I, 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 I don't it. think it. I don't think it did anything though. <laughs> you should have t- should have tipped him lures with them, you know. <laughs> I was thinking about that. <laughs> hey, if you get yeah. you, you got a small yeah, bite, gets, you gotta try anything, you know. Yeah, get some gummy worms next time. Try that. Yeah. Right. Uh, somebody's asking when is Adam's next fishing trip up north. Uh, it's gonna be probably the first or second week of February. I'll be heading back up north. So depending on the ice, still waiting on some reports. So once so the ice is solid, I'll be going up. So there you go, Travis. Have the truck and trailer ready. Yep. Sounds like he's ready to go. Uh, was there anything you did that didn't take that you would have wished you didn't? Um, I had an extra bin in my shanty with a bunch of useless stuff I didn't use. So I wish I didn't bring that. Anything that you wish you would have took? Um. He, no, he didn't. He had everything. Amazingly, I I remembered everything. I I had everything I needed. I kind of make a, a checklist before I go a week before and kind of make sure I have everything together. Okay, that was gonna be my next question. When do you start? You know, pre trip and everything. Yeah, I start getting a, getting it ready for you know a big trip like that. I'll you know a few days in advance for sure. Make sure I have all my gear in line. If I need to buy stuff, you know, make sure I can go out and buy stuff. So I prepare for that. Other than the uh, quad going through the ice, what what's the funniest thing you saw up there from other people? Um, Anything stand out? Not really, because we were, like I said, we were fishing away from most most of the people, so okay. we were kind of in our own little little group over there. Um, well, well, in your nothing little... nothing too crazy. I guess I had a funny story about me. Okay. Oh, do tell. Do tell, because uh, Jesse says that twenty two incher was a fighter. Yep, that was the one he caught. Yep, that was a good one. Best one of the trip. Um, no, I was going out and I lost my heater. You wait. You were you were on the snowmobile driving out and you lost heater. My heater, yes. So I was going to the other side of the lake, and by the time I got uh, out of my snowmobile, took the cover off my shanty, realized my heater was gone. I immediately packed back up, took back off, and went back to where I was. The heater was gone. So I'm like, okay. So I reached out to the local bait shop, you know, told him I lost my heater. Well, he comes back with a message. He says, he said, oh, no. He said, I just stood it up on the ice, thinking someone would come back for it, which I did, but someone ended up stealing it, taking it. So I had to go and buy a new heater. Oh, man. So another reason, big water, it's rough out there. It's not smooth, clean ice. I mean, you're hitting ice chunks, so your gear's bouncing oh. all over. So always checking back, looking, making sure your gear's still well, I thought you had a up. cover on that. I, I do, but I think it slipped out. I had it in the front of my shanty. I had it in a bad spot, and I think it slipped from, you know, like I said, your shanty's sliding around on the bare ice right. back and forth. So I think it just hit one ice chunk and just really jolted that heater, and it slipped out of my cover. So um, with that being said, uh, you got the little buddy, right? Is that the what I saw? Yep, that's my new one, the green one. The, it's a new <laughs> one, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would think that that I guess that cover doesn't hold down as tight as I thought. It's pretty good, but like I said, if a you know heavy object really hits the side of that you know that cover, it's not it's not gonna hold. Is place, it is so. it just like a stretch cover? You stretch it over. Yeah, it's the... just like a elastic. Oh, you don't t- you don't like tighten it. There's no strap. No, there's no tighten strap. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. Like I said, it's pretty it's pretty sealed pretty good, but I just happen to have that heater in bad spot and it's all. So they look like they're tied I, down pretty good. I know, right? So obviously when you're traveling like that, make sure you're packed correctly. Secure. Yep. Make sure all your gear is secured and good. And I'm constantly looking back, so I'm always almost, checking on your I'm I don't know how those are set up, but it almost like if you got like a mini or you, you found like a cargo net for a pickup truck. Mm-hmm. You could oh, uh, one of those stretch ones. Yeah, and stretch it over. That yeah. way nothing goes anywhere. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, but. and that was my first trip with that shanty. I, you know, I haven't had it on the ice, so you know, getting my layout down, you know, mm-hmm. in there, you know, figuring out exactly how I want everything laid out. Though so now I got it pretty patent down where everything. Trial and there. Right. And, alert, and, so. and, and that and that one in the picture. Um, he had the otter one, so you know what? Live and learn, right? And unfortunately, like Mark says, that was probably a hundred dollars you didn't want to spend, but you're not going to go out there without a heater, right? No, I definitely needed a new heater. Um, so yeah, it was about a hundred. Definitely worth it. Which is kind of nice having a big town close by because you know they're going to have them in there. Yeah, well, you, uh, that'll just the bait shop. You know, the bait right. shop does too. So. You know, and, yep. and, and Blades, Bait, and Tackle, I tell you what, they got some pictures of inside and looks pretty oh, good. Yeah. You know, they, they got uh, everything you need. Right? So, you know. If everybody's ever up in the area want to stop at a bait and tackle, stop at Blades there. Looks like they got a little bit of everything. Yeah, they definitely do. They got chanies, augers, fish finders, every lure, you know, terminal tackle, whether, you know, you're fishing tip-ups or anything. So, But definitely informational, very, very informational. Good bait, too. Good deal. And there you go. Bungees and carabiners are awesome. You can never have too many, Tammy. Right. Yeah. I Extra pins. Go with the, the pink bungees with the matching pink carabiners. You'll be good to go. That's right. 
I wonder if that's what she's got on her bike to hold stuff down. I well, assume. we'll see it when she's up in Saginaw when we're going out on the fish. She's riding her bike into the, the, the marina. Yeah, from the hotel that she's going to stay up there, so she's there on time, right? She's probably got a pin, pin, pinwheel on it. we got to get her a nice close one, too. <laughs> right? So, but, uh, no, it sounds like you had a really good time. Obviously, uh, you had some really good food. Uh, yeah. And, you know, hope we get back out there and hope you keep up the everybody that's listening. You go to Up North Journal Fishing, you can see more of Adam's adventures while he's out fishing and, and help us out over on that page as well. Besides our Up North, uh, share that one. You know, if you got anything that you want to talk about fishing, go over there, ask Adam questions. He'll be glad to answer them. Yep, absolutely. Anything, uh, anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to, to mention or not? Um. Not really. I mean, just like I said before, you know, if you're fishing big water, definitely, you know, take the take the steps and prepare for it. You know, you don't want to get caught out there in a bad situation. You know, have a GPS, know where, you know, tell people where you're going and be prepared. You know, if you have to stay overnight, something happens, right. you know, just be prepared for sure. So. Yeah, no, planning ahead is always good, always good. Yep. So safety yeah. is number one. So. Yeah, yeah, that way you can fish another day or hunt another day or whatever. So, yep. uh, so before we let you go, though, uh, I got to thinking, okay, so you talked about food and everything so you said you guys just kind of kicked back and took it easy you guys any euchre games going on up there i mean i know that's that's big you know especially here in michigan and up north you guys play any cards so me and my other buddy don't know how to play euchre and what? my other the other two tried teaching us and it was a pretty long night to say the how many, words were flying how many so. adult beverages did you have before they tried to teach you it's not that hard i i, I don't know i've just never played it so <sighs> I am. I will bet you he got the Bowers all night. Okay, so. Hey, not going to lie, I was doing pretty good. I had the best hands all night, and I've never played, so. Beginner's luck. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, wait till you have a loner in your hand and somebody calls yeah. the other suit. and <laughs> <laughs> Table gets flipped. Right? And I don't mean, like, flipping around. I mean, flipped. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh man, we got to put that uh, on the contracts. You know, must, must play you must know how to play you, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, maybe so. you guys teach me how. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, even <laughs> even wow. Tammy's got the what going on. Exactly, you live in Michigan, and yeah, you all it takes is, is is Mark to say what, and we're gonna have to get Adam and teach him how to play. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. All right, well, that'll do it for us this week, I guess. So uh, we'll yes. wrap up the show. And uh, uh, Euchre is not a game you learn in one night. Sure it is. It's not that hard. I picked up some things from it. Okay. All right. Give me give me another two two tries at it. I'll be good. All right. And there you go. <laughs> and, and and Denise will vouch for that why it doesn't take a night. It, it also depends on who you're playing with. Yep. That, yeah. That's a, a critical thing. Uh, little horse, big horse. That's got to be an Indiana game. It's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so great job. Um and uh, we'll hope to hear more from you soon with the cold weather coming in. Yep, right. I'll be hopefully on the ice next weekend, so that's Good the deal. plan. Hopefully we'll we'll look for you being up there, maybe doing some drops. Uh, as you said before we did the show tonight, that is actually you didn't have a signal up there, so you couldn't do any live drops from the ice. Yeah, we're, like I said, we were probably two miles out on the ice, so yeah. sitting in the middle of the UP in the middle of the lake, not very good. Yeah, there you go. It happens. We're looking ahead next week. Oh, next week. We're going to follow up a fishing show with a fishing show. Uh, Lance Valentine is going to be on the show. Walleye 101. Walleye 101. Talk to him. Find out how he's doing. I talked to him a little bit at the show. He's doing fantastic. Got some new jigs out. We'll talk okay. about that. We'll see how he's doing up on the river, down in the bay. Gotcha. Switch that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so next week, Lance Valentine, is, is, we're going to do some talking fishing, whether it's hard water or what he's seen coming for uh, soft water. Okay. Uh, any chance of us twisting your arm having you join us next week? I'm down. Okay. Sounds good to me. Keep keep up the, the talk on the walleye. And yep. And then two weeks, uh, I do believe, is the college kids. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk more fishing. So we're going to have a couple weeks of fishing. Uh, anybody out there, don't forget here in Michigan, you've got till February 1st to get your turkey permits in. And uh, get that done. That's it. Yeah, the only thing, only thing that I know that's coming up big around here is going to be the RV camper show next. Week. Get the RV show. Then we got uh, outdoor rama. Shows are starting to pop now. So. There's a couple shows popping. I got a, a March is the West Side fishing sport fishing show. Okay. So uh, yeah, if you want, go check out the RVs over there. Um, Mike's probably going to be RVing here all summer long, and we'll stay tuned for more from that. 
All right. Well, that'll do it for us this week, folks. Uh, as we always say, if you're watching us or listening to us, you know, do us a favor. Give us a like, follow, share on our social media and share the show for us as well, please. If you're listening on iTunes, make sure you give us a review over there. That helps people who support us. And uh, that'll do it for us this week. And we will be back again next Wednesday night. Uh, with, if everything goes according to plan, we should be sitting here with uh, Lance Valentine. Absolutely. So that'll do it for us this week, folks. Y'all take care. This episode was brought to you by PSC Archery, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Call, The Island Armory, Packer Max, Sunrise Archery, and C3 Better the Hunt Technology. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.